The city of La Crosse, Wisconsin just passed Ordinance Number 5220 to align itself with the LGBTQ community by banning counseling that seeks to change a person's sexual orientation, especially if that person is below the age of 18. So you might read that or hear that and just get kind of confused. Okay, they're banning counseling that seeks to change a person's sexual orientation. Does that mean they're on our side or not? You know, I know it's hard to tell because they're using the wrong language, but in fact, they are not. What they're, what they're trying to ban is what's previously been called conversion therapy, but really you're trying to assist a person who has unwanted homosexual uh, desires and who wants to get rid of those desires that he might live a normal, healthy, heterosexual life. Now, this ordinance literally comes with a penalty, a fine of $1,000 a day and the cost of the prosecution itself. So. It would ban anyone from counseling someone under the age of 18 in moving his desires to be more healthy. But this same ordinance allows for the facilitation of gender transition and any counseling that encourages that. So, so you can only make the person more disordered. You can't actually make them more healthy. You can't really help them. That's the thing. And you know, this this phrase conversion therapy has it's it's loaded at this point because the homosexual community has worked really hard to associate it with like electroshock therapy or something like that. Uh, c conversion therapy, when usually used, is the reference to any counselling where a, a qualified counsellor sits down with an individual who doesn't want his you know his, his attractions. And the counselor helps him to see through whatever abuse, which is usually the case, led to those attractions or whatever overly dominant mother or whatever absentee father uh, you have there, which often goes together. That's what we're talking about when we reference conversion therapy or uh, Joseph Nicolosi, who sort of pioneered what he called reparative therapy, which is the same thing. And he used that term because he wanted to place the emphasis on the fact that what we're doing is repairing something in the individual so that he can live a healthy life. So it's not conversion, it's how do we, how do we, how do we fix what went wrong that you can live the life that you were meant to live. And with this ordinance though, there aren't ordinances all around the country, so this case is kind of unique in that sense. But this is becoming the norm of acceptability, such that it's perfectly okay for you to take a child and say, you know what, maybe you're not a guy, maybe you're actually a girl, or vice versa, and confuse them about something as fundamental to their nature as sex. That's perfectly okay, but for some reason, it's not okay to take a person who has unwanted homosexual proclivities and say, do you want to work on on getting rid of those? It, it's it's possible to get rid of those, or it may be possible. We can work together. We can figure out what caused this, and you may end up with, with something better. You may end up healthier. Would you work with me on that? <laughs> and so this is how messed up our world is. That, that one of those is okay, and one of them isn't, and it's it's absolutely backwards. In uh, I believe it's throughout the entire country of Canada. I believe at this point this is the case. You you can't have psychologists engage in so-called conversion therapy, that is, you can't help a person with unwanted homosexual ideation. Now, the Wisconsin, Inst Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty said that this particular ordinance is so broadly written that it could apply to counselors, parents, and ministers, preventing them from speaking the truth to a young person who has been lied to by the what, the teachers, the different child abusers who are trying to confuse these kids about who they are fundamentally. So it's it's perfectly okay to confuse a child about sex and gender, but nobody can come along and say, actually, that's not the case. That's not true. So uh, good luck to the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. But I thought I'd draw your attention to this because this is not just relegated to this one city. This is the nature of what's sort of expanding throughout. I know in California there's been quite a battle regarding whether or not people with unwanted homosexual attractions can have 
access to the therapy that they want. There are people who traveled out of state for it. That's it's absurd, and and rather evil actually to say to somebody that they can't seek the therapy that they want. Which I mean, when we're talking therapy, what are we talking about? A conversation. That's what therapy is. It's a it's just a conversation that you have routinely, in the hopes that you can become a healthier person. For for the gay lobby to come along and prevent that makes me kind of wonder about it actually because I mean isn't the whole argument is well we're born like this so you can never change it but they seem actively afraid that in fact it could be changed because that undermines their entire nature of well we're always born like this um, but <laughs> I, I guess I guess you can read into that what what you want personally uh, I think that the the conservatives to the degree that there were ever, ever any I mean, it's I hate using the term now because they're they're so unwilling to try to conserve anything of value. But when I so when I say conservatives in this case, I actually mean those who were trying to conserve. I think the moment that they consented to the idea of sexual orientations, they kind of went wrong. Meaning that I don't think that there are two sexual orientations that are both equally valid and you're just born that way. I think that was a a false pretense that's put forward by. Uh, the gay lobby, and which isn't true. There is one healthy sexual orientation. You can be heterosexual. Literally, men and women are designed for each other, physically designed to go together and and beget children. Right? That's it's that's physically who who we are. So men are made for women. Women are made for men. And then there are a variety of different disordered sexual attractions, but they don't define your identity at all and it's not it's not like well you just you're just born in this very unhealthy way I, I don't think so but in any event that's way off topic at this point so i i think that regardless we should all defend the rights of these people to get access to the help that they want and and, and need if you liked that video enough to make it to the end of the video, which is like superhuman in terms of modern attention spans, please make sure to share this with your friends and family. I also have links in the description so you can follow me elsewhere and you can find other videos. Thanks.